What's your feeling of the the vibe for Bitcoin right now? Everyone's pretty optimistic. How are you feeling? Yeah, well, I think what's interesting, and we kind of touched on it a little bit, but I think what's going on is, you know, the top of funnel for Bitcoin used to be Bitcoin, right? That's kind of how it was back in 2010, 11 to 16. I, I put out a, a tweet a couple of weeks ago that I've been kind of talking about, and it's actually made it into our new investor presentation as well, just like a screenshot of the tweet. And it was basically kind of laying out that the top of funnel for Bitcoin was Bitcoin from, you know, 2010 to 2016. And then because of the ICO boom and all the shitcoin VC money, the top of funnel for Bitcoin was shitcoins from 2017 to 2023, basically. And with the launch of the ETFs, the predominant top of funnel for Bitcoin now is Bitcoin. It's a slightly inferior sort of Bitcoin, but it's not bad. And they are, you know, broadly marketing things that are true about Bitcoin. If anything, they're just marketing kind of a subset of what's true about Bitcoin, but there are, um, there aren't any broad lies or false narratives being promulgated by the, the Van X and the Bitwise and the Fidelities and BlackRocks, like they're in Invesco, like they're saying true things about Bitcoin, um, with a slightly inferior product. That's a dream for Bitcoiners because it's like, thanks for the hundreds of millions of dollars of ad spend. And all we have to do is like, as people get more into it, they start learning about it. And we have the data that shows the more you buy, the more you prefer self-custody. I thought one of the most genuinely bullish things that I've seen in the last few days was that BTC Sessions YouTube channel is just blowing up over 100,000 subscribers, something like this. And he's like the, the guy guiding people into self-custody and and it's, it's just fantastic to see that because it, it's, it's like a real signal, right? It, it really does seem like people are going that direction, right? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's all, the, all the Bitcoin channels are kind of exploding since January, as you can imagine. Um, and it's worth putting out better content and paying more attention to like your VSEO. So, you know, it's probably not happening just by accident to Ben, even though he's saying that. But my guess is he's doing a few smarter things and maybe paying a contractor to do a little bit better job with the you know, the VSEO or the thumbnails or whatever, you know, like you, you kind of improve things when the returns to improving it are bigger, which they are in a bull market. So we're putting more into ad spend, we're putting more into VSEO, we're hiring more people on the marketing and content side. And, and you do that because the returns are greater. And so everything's exploding at the same time. I mean, we went from, I mean, we probably averaged 30 to 40 K a month on ad spend in 2023. And we're doing like over 600K a month now, right? So we 20X our ad spend. Holy um, that's and that's the type of thing you do because the returns are much, much better when other people are kind of helping you market things and the price is doing its thing. Like it's, that's when you spend. That makes sense. This is where everything is good for Bitcoin comes in, right? So like we, we all help, all the Bitcoin ads help all the Bitcoin companies. Like, yes. uh, and the uh, Bitcoiners and yep. everything we do, if we're awesome to one another, we help Bitcoin, like uh, everything's connected here. That's such a, that's the real magic where the real magic is, I, I think. Yeah, totally agree. So yeah. So back on like, what, what do the stats show in, in the history of Swan, about half of the people have left their coins in custody and half have taken self custody. But the people taking the half that are taking self custody is 83% of the coins. Well, so the more you buy, the more you take self custody because it's worth it. It's worth it to figure out how to do it and what you want your setup to be. And, you know, for, for some nutball psycho Bitcoin lady to teach her husband about self custody and figure out the inheritance thing with their lawyer or whatever it is, you know, uh, you do that once you get over a, an amount that's meaningful to you. Um, and it's the same thing with the ETFs. Like, of course, once you get orange pilled enough, the vast majority of people will be like, oh, you know what? Maybe I actually want the real thing. And maybe I only want to pay once instead of every year. Yeah. So it's, it's just a great, a great top of funnel for, for Bitcoin. I've been talking about what I've been calling the ETF multiplier. And I don't know if it's the right term for it, but basically the concept is however much capital flows into the ETFs because they exist. Because the ETFs exist with all their advertising and the stamp of approval and everything, another five to 10 X more capital 
is flowing into Bitcoin even outside of the ETF flows. Yeah. And will over the rest of the decade because the ETFs exist. So it's incremental on top of what's going into the ETFs because they exist and because Larry and Abby have said Bitcoin's okay. Yeah. And on top of that, you have the halving. So you have like limited supply meet unlimited demand at some point, which is just weird. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, I think, you know, uh, price is set at the margin. So that has, that has a big effect. Absolutely. You know, kind of like new supply that's coming on. Obviously, I've been like a bit of a seller of the coins on exchanges thing because it's gotten so much dramatically easier to get coins in and out of cold storage. And so I just, I think that that metric is probably uh, overused and, you know, shouldn't be relied on for really anything. You know, because all these all these custodians, even they they can easily shuttle coins in a few seconds. You know, back and forth between cold and hot. So it's just it doesn't mean what it used to. But nevertheless, I think if you look at like hodl waves and things like that, it's clear that a preponderance of these damn coins ain't moving. You know, and and we'll see if there's ever you know, I think I, you know, one god candle ain't cool. You know, it's cool ten god candles. <laughs> when we see tech not candled over the course of a few weeks, you know, then we'll see, we'll see what people do. How would you define a, a God candle? Uh, I mean, broadly, we're just talking about a $10,000 move in a day and you know, that's, we've never seen it before. So that'll be the first God candle when it happens. But once it happens once and the price is going up, like, you know, that's, that's going to be a lot easier to achieve going from 120 to 130 is a lot easier than going from like 40 to 50. So I expect lots of them once they start. What is the biggest candle we've seen? Because we've definitely seen thousand, multiple thousands. We haven't seen 10,000, but yeah. No, I mean, four or five. What's the biggest upward move in percentage terms or in dollar terms in a 24 hour period, I guess is the question. I don't know. Yeah, I guess we'll see. (laughs) We'll we'll have to figure it out. But the, the funniest thing I think is people think that Bitcoin will go to a hundred thousand dollars and then and then drop again. Why? <laughs> like, is everyone in silent agreement that okay, we hit hundred k, we have to sell? Like, that's not how markets work, right? <laughs> as far as I know. Do you remember? Yeah, there was like a. I, t- I totally remember this actually. It was October twenty fifth, twenty nineteen, and it was uh, Xi Jinping open support for blockchain technology. Remember that ripped up like 40% in the day. It went from, went from seven, seven, three, six, one to 10,370 in the short span of some hours, registering a gain of 42% from its daily low. Whoa. That was October, 2019. Yeah. Percentage, but there's also quite a few thousand. So yeah, if, if the definition of a gold candle is in, in dollar terms and not in percent. Listen, I'm rolling with 10K for now. I reserve the right to change it later. <laughs> I'm, I'm not calling God candle until, until I see a 10K move in one, one 24-hour period. I'm not calling God candle. 